very popular misnomer that we are gods. And I would respectfully, humbly like to say we are not gods. We are mm -hmm. human beings. We are earthling humans. And for a human to pontificate that they are a god is as preposterous as your six-year-old granddaughter saying that, Grandpa, I'm a grown woman. <laughs> and putting on makeup and wearing clothes that she shouldn't be wearing and being like, well, I'll be back at midnight. I'll holler. And you're like, child, you better get in here. Or, you know, right. you can continue the metaphors. So the first thing that we have to do as a humanity is to recognize our pos a position in the scheme and the schematic of creation. And earthling, mm -hmm. fleshly mortals are at a very specific you know, we don't even we don't even know how to awaken in our dreams or consciously enter the dreams of other people. We don't know how to stop time. We don't know how to bilocate or trilocate. We don't know how to create a doppelganger of ourselves. We don't know how to have a direct conversation with higher beings, let alone our higher self, our spirit gods, or even our ancestors who were right next door through the barrier astral fluid. So it is important for us to know where we stand. And it is not to lower us, but it is to give us a reality check in which to spring from foundationally. And once you have that, then you can grow. What I have observed over, I would say about 40 years, most people who say that they are a God from five percenters to other mm -hmm. people, I used to challenge people and say, well, what makes you a God? And mm -hmm. a lot of times people will say, well, you know, I, I manifest, I'm excellent, I'm great, I'm beautiful, I'm great looking, I, I've done this, and, and, I, and I'll say, okay, that's great. Um, but what is it that makes you a God? Can you demonstrate that for me? And the reason that I ask people that is because in antiquity, it was a common practice for people to show and prove, and prove. their divinity. And that was the way that you knew that this is a person who is, in fact, one that you may want to listen to, learn from, and possibly follow. If they do not have that, then it is simply a pontification, ergo, be example that I gave you of the six-year-old child saying that she's a grown woman and she is not. So let me, let me ask you, hold on, wait, before, you, before sure. you go on, let me ask you a question. So with, with, with Clarence 13X, would you think, did you think he got killed because of that? The 5% that the brother found his father. Father Allah 13X. I don't know why he got killed. I don't really know too much about okay. his about his death. But what I will say, anytime there is a melanated person that mm -hmm. offers something that is antithetical to the advent of religion, you mm -hmm. automatically put an X on your back. Mm -hmm. right. So you have to have other things that protect mm -hmm. you from the antithetical forces that oppose that type of mental clarity. Yes. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. That's right. That's right. Apotheosis is that. And um, apotheosis, when you begin to learn the mechanisms of how to become a god, you will start to slowly distance yourself away from other humanity. And that can be kind of lonely when you realize that not only are you a black sheep, but you will start to realize that 60%, 70%, if you make it that far. 80 to 95 percent of the people around you literally especially your family your your social network are not on the level that you are on and then you have to make a choice as to whether or not you will continue to evolve and expand or if you will stop your growth and continue to fit in with your surroundings in the levels of comfort as opposed to going into the 
the X factor of unfamiliarity and possible discomfort. And most people don't want to do that. But I'm going to give people very, very clear, a clear map and blueprint of exactly how to do that. And only a divine avatar can teach another human being and is authorized to teach a human being how to become a higher being and a God. And I feel that one of the uh, things that I like to teach is an abundant mindset and teach people the reason that I start with the altar and how to really connect with your ancestors and get them to open up doorways for you is because when you don't have to be concerned about your next meal, your next rent payment or your next mortgage payment or your children's college tuition. And, you know, you don't have to be involved with those things because everything is laid out for you. It makes it a lot easier to prioritize your spiritual education and get off of this plane of existence a lot faster and more expediently in high fashion. So that to me is one of the best ways to induct that into your life. One more time, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Ascension, um, you talk about this a lot and you have so much knowledge around this. And right now in the climate that we're in, we are hearing the lingo ascension ascension do this because we're in the midst of earth's ascension can you break down what that really means for the lay person who's like ascension am i gonna get it is it like the rapture what is that really right well to be fair the word ascension is not proprietary to any one group right now we are in a spiritual war called Ragnarok. Mm. And Ragnarok is the fight for the denizens of Earth to overtake it with darkness. There have been many, many micro portals to Ragnarok going on for a long time. But in the year 2024, it is at an all time high. I started to see a lot of these leaks. And you know, King Simon, you and I were speaking yes. a couple of weeks ago, and I was telling you about uh, being present at Spike Lee's 35th yes. uh, block party, do the right thing. And I'll share with you what I was, what King Simon and I were talking about. You know, I saw Keith Shock Lee, who was part of yeah. the bomb squad. And I went back to look at Fight the Power, the video that came out, I believe, in 1989. And a minute into the video, I, I just started crying. And you looking know, looking at the video, and I'm in the gym working out, looking at the video, and I'm like, <laughs> and you know, people looking at me like, uh, and and I, I just I couldn't hold back the tears because, um, I'm looking at this video, and the realization that that was probably one of the last times that we really worked together, and it reminded me of antiquity when the gods and extraterrestrials and humans and immortals all work together. Yeah. Some people say the last time that happened was the 18th dynasty. Mm. Some people say that it was the last days of the golden age, but whatever the case mm. was, there was a time where we had that type of cohesion. That's where mm. Tataria comes in. So when we look at uh, the fight, the power video, and I realized that 40 acres and a mule, which is Spike Lee's company, Yep. Death Jam, Public Enemy, and their mm -hmm. personnel, which is, you know, Professor Griff and the S1Ws and Terminator X and Harry Allen, the media assassin, and Bill right. Stephanie, yep. and all of the people that got together to make sure that there was a concise message. We are now in the times of a spiritual war. Our sister counterpart is Midgard which is one of the, it's in the middle tier of Asgard. And a lot of people think it's a fantasy, but it is not. I've gone to London, England 10 times in a very short amount of time. And I kept saying, why am I being brought back here? Why do I keep coming back to England? 
And there is a portal there that leads to Midgard. And the system of Asgard is a very real thing. So the descendants of Ragnarok happening is where you see a lot of our uh, movie stars are enigmatically passing away. You see a lot of people are uh, getting tattoos on their face. Rap mm -hmm. music, which I refer to, no disrespect, this crap music, unfortunately, mm -hmm. has destroyed the decorum and the morality of our youth. Mm -hmm. And lots of the things that we celebrate our pastimes are about lying and deceiving each other. We are really backwards. And if you look at Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, and it's like, you know, the leadership of America is at an all time low. And it makes me wonder how Russia, China, BRICS in particular, and North Korea look at us and may want to come and try to invade America. The only solace that I have, and Supernova Islam and I were talking about this. He said, brother, you don't have to worry about that because the CIA will never allow that to happen. And I said, well, I hope that's true. <laughs> but when we look at how weak the leadership is here in America, but we are a superpower and we also have the financial commerce of the world right here in New York City, I don't know how we can continue to sustain this division and polarization.